Hello everyone, Wanda the Foiling Rock Lady here, and today I'm going to be doing a mermaid silhouette on my river rock here that's humongous. I think it's seven or eight pounds. I can't remember what it weighed at, but it was in between the two. Anyways, um, I'm going to be putting my mermaid silhouette right here on my rock to cover that imperfection. It's a little rust. I couldn't get it out, but that's okay because it's a river rock and river rocks are beautiful. Anyways, this rock will get exceptionally darker. Let me grab some water here. When, okay, this rock won't get exception. Actually, there it goes. So you see, it'll turn a bit darker. Anyways, I'm going to be painting a wave background, like undersea sort of looking thing with the mixture of these three colors. This is blue, uh, flash, aqua flash, color shift by Folk Art, Apple, Bauer, Apple Barrel. Tuscan teal um, and then when that dries we're going to be tracing transferring our mermaid on or you can freehand sketch yours if you like I'm not great at that so I will do my thing and trace like I always do and I'm going to give you an opportunity here real quick to pause your screen snap a screenshot however you do it um, to grab your image here if you want to print out the traceable. I've blocked out and drawn in some details that I like to do on the mermaid. This wasn't on the original mermaid. Matter of fact, the original mermaid is blue. If it helps you, I'll, I'll give you that visual aid as well. Um, sorry. This is the original. It's very big, very large. I bought that off Shutterstock. So, anyways, I shrunk it down to fit on my rock, and then I put in some details around uh, the tail and down here some lines, and then I put a brassiere on her just to keep it PG-13. And with that, I want to do this one too. Isn't that gorgeous? Maybe on another one. It didn't fit on my rock. <laughs> okay. Okay. So here's how we're going to do this. Take a bit of your paint, just a drop of the Tuscan teal or similar color, like so, like about so, and a drop of the aqua and a drop of the blue. We're kind of making our own color here. And a fluffy brush that holds kind of a lot of water. That one might be too big. Probably like a medium sized fluffy round. Soft. Get some water. Pick it up and mix in with your paint. So we're just creating like a background wash. And then we're going to thin it out. Just almost as thin as water. like that maybe even a little more water because we're just going to tint the rock with it so now that that's made dry off your brush a bit go back to this side and you're going to make your waves with this so load your brush and then pull off the excess and we're just gonna make some waves so I just like to seriously it's not anything special I usually go about three waves on a mermaid rock Like that. It doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to 
thin this out anyways. We're going to come up and meet these wave lines with our water with our watered down paint. Okay. Now, come in here. Now on the top, you can start like at the wave line. So you can blend it back down. Like that. Do the same thing on the bottom. Come up and meet the wave line. Just make sure you blend out that sharp paint line. And then get some clear water and pull it down. Sorry, clear water and pull the paint down from there. Add a bit of the color back in. So this is a very thin, you want to be able to see through it, kind of like sand under the ocean, okay? So we're going to do the same thing in this one. We're going to run out of water here, so I'm just going to make the same soupy mix over here. Blend that down and then grab some plain water and be careful when you come down to meet the other one. Don't really touch it all the way. Just get real close because that water will travel into the wave, but you don't want to disturb that line. Does that make sense? I hope. Kind of like that. Right. Same thing here, darker at the line, so we're trying to blend that out there. And then just a clear wash here. My rock is tipping, I need to lift it just a tad so that the water quits running off of it, or the paint quits running right down off of it. Okay, and see I lost my definition up here, so I'm just going to grab a smidgen. This is the Apple Barrel uh, Tuscan Teal. I'm just going to sort of put that back together. And then add a touch of this on top to give it that... Actually, that didn't work very well. So, I'll grab it and add it. Voila. So, when this dries, we will trace our mermaid onto the rock and then block in the black of the mermaid before we get started with the little details and then the cool foil. So while our rock is drying, let me show you. Let me show you, show you some cool foil. Oh, I missed a spot here. And I will put a link to this foil in the description for you. This foil is so cool. And a lot of people have been talking about the pink chair in Canada, which is amazing, but if you're in the US or any other country, it's quite expensive to shop there, which you, it's beautiful. And obviously there are some things that only the pink chair has, but I found a foil that was quite exclusive, hard to find, obscure. I didn't find it, a friend found it, a fellow member. Anyways, I'll show you. 
It came in this box with all of these goodies. Can you guys spot which one it is? Uh-huh. Polka dot holographic foil. Whoa, whoa. Look at that. Gorgeous. Okay. Well, that's not the one I'm using <laughs> on the mermaid tail today, but it's beautiful. So generally, I use mermaid um, foil on the mermaid tail, but I wanted to go in a different direction and use this beautiful other foil that came in this set here. I just want to give it some design. So I'm going to use this one. And it's going to be on black. This rock has a lot of other stuff on it, but that might help you to see the pattern there. So that's going to be my tail. It's going to sit on my mermaid. Where did I put her? Like so on the tail. So she'll have a beautiful tail. And um, beyond the brassiere, I'll probably find some cool thing there too. But so in this set, let me push that out of the way. You've got this beautiful design. Um, there's a silver paisley up here in the corner. Cool find. Beautiful. This one is absolutely gorgeous. You know, I might do, I think I might use this <laughs> on Miss Mermaid. Oh, that's pretty, huh? Yeah, we're going to use that. That's beautiful. It almost looks like Little Mermaids. Okay, so there's that foil. I don't even know what that is. Here's the one I call Southwestern Aztec-y looking. I used this on Mr. Turtle a while back on his uh, shell. And I also used on Mr. Turtle black. I called it fishnet. It was black. Same exact design, but in black. Can you see this? This, this is a find, you guys. <laughs> this set is a find. And then the infamous, not so infamous anymore, crackle foil that was also obscure for a bit. Now it's a little easier to find. It's a very cool foil. And this laser foil, so neat. It's kind of like bark to me. I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet, but so many opportunities to use some really cool new holographics. And the dream catchers. I don't know if you can see these. Look at those. Just gorgeous. Oh, they're upside down, of course. But just gorgeous. Got to catch them right in the right light. There you go. So that is this set. I think our rock is not dry yet. <laughs> so I'm going to pause and then I'll be right back with you. And we will go ahead and transfer that image to the rock. Hello. So we're all dry now and I'm going to trace. I haven't done that yet. But I wanted to show you I have these uh, starfish tattoos. So I'm semi thinking about adding one, you know, down in here somewhere. I have the space up here too, and I have some jellyfishes. The problem is with tattoos, sometimes if they're not on a white background, they don't really show up much, but I was thinking about this guy, maybe up in here somewhere. But do you see how much fun this could be? Crazy multimedia, or a squid, or octopus, I mean, or yeah, octopus. Cool, huh? Could put a whale, but that's just not right. <laughs> the size is all wrong. <laughs> Anyways, I thought that would be fun. So I'm not going to make you guys sit here and watch me trace, but I'm going to go ahead and get started and transfer her to the rock. Be super careful around the face, eyes, nose, mouth. And it's better if you do this one on a big scale because those little tiny details make the whole silhouette. So when you're around that area of the face, be super detailed with it. So use a super pointy small stylus. 
All right, y'all. I'll see you in a minute. All right, so let me turn on my flash here. Um, I have it transferred on there through the carbon paper. And now I'm just gonna use the Posca to trace around it and then go ahead and color it in with my, color it in, huh, paint it in with my um, Apple Barrel Jet Black. Sorry, my other Posca was running low. It's colored well. Maybe I'll just color the fishies here real quick with this little bit one. And we'll be covering the fish with um, some foil as well. And you can change the fish and, you know, make them more fish-like. Looks like a pretty fish to me. So, yeah, just go around your lines and then you're going to paint those in completely black as well as the mermaid go all the way around her and paint her in completely black I held on to my image because I had made my notes on here basically my I the marks where I'm going to change things or add foil so keep your image handy don't throw it out we'll be referring back to that and you can make yours the way you want it if you want to mermaid scale the whole uh, mermaid that's totally acceptable whatever you do you but I'm going to do her tail and I might even put a flower in her hair I'm not sure yet <laughs> So, I'm just going to keep doing my outlining. Like that. And around her face, that's the, this might even be too big. That's the big thing you want to be super careful with. So I have these micro tip pens, like Micron. 0.15. Little tiny hair like. I'm going to see what I can get out of that hair. Wow, that's thinner than the line even on my lock. But it is leaving it nice and delicate. I'll be painting over it, but it's going to help me keep the detail around her face. Of course, this part of her face is on bumpy parts of this rock. <laughs> so I'm trying to get in the holes. Good 
I think we can see her eyelash and her nose and her lips. Okay. And then there's the brush. So you go around your mermaid and line it and then fill her in with the black paint all the way around. However you want to get there. If you want to use your Posca the whole way and fill it in, great. If you want to use a brush and line it and fill it in, that's also fantastic. It's whatever you are comfortable with. So I'm going to be using several different things to paint. Oh, I think I ruined a brush here. I did. Huh, how about that? So I'm going to be using several different things to paint and fill in the silhouette. Okay, I'll meet you back here when she's all filled in. Okay, so we've got it all traced, all filled in, all painted in black. Now it's time for the fun bit. The foil. Yay! So today we're going to use, if I can get it out of the dealie, MAC Art Nail Art Foil Glue, if I can open it. I'm going to pour some off into the well. And it's a lot easier to use from... You can pour it off onto a piece of uh, wax paper or, you know, whatever you're, you use for a palette. You can clean it with acetone when you're done. Okay. So for, I'm going to use my stylus because it sort of will etch on top of this black bit. So I'm actually going to use this one. So here I'm going to draw in her tail around her belly part. So like so. And then her brassiere. Or what would that be? Swim top? I don't know. Okay, and and then I'll be using uh, some paint to paint some stripes down the tail. So, okay, so I'm going to cut a section of my foil, and you're going to need a UV light, so make sure you've got it plugged in and ready to go. Today we're using 6 watt MacArt Mini, the kick out legs, look how pretty those look, <laughs> gotta love holographic. Plugged in, ready to go. Okay, so I'm thinking this is gonna be so pretty. You know, it might be too big though. Too big a print on the. Let's see. We'll look at the other one too. Okay. 
Yeah, I think we're going to go with the other one. <laughs> it's just, it's prettier. It's like sparklier. Okay. So I'm going to cut off a section of the foil here. Okay, so here I got my disposable eyeliner brush here, dipping it in the glue, and I'm going to start on the mermaid's tail. And I have to apologize if you hear my family in the background, they're moving things in and out, so it's a bit loud. Okay, so we've got the glue going on. We're going to do the whole section down to uh, the drawn-in stripes. My rock is big and bulky and not uh, steady, so I'm holding it with my hand so the glue doesn't drip down the back side or the top side. So try not to introduce bubbles into it. If you see them, try to move them to the edge. And the way to avoid bubbles is to have your glue warm. You can keep your bottle in your apron pocket, um, shirt pocket, any bucket that it will fit in just to warm it up a little bit or set it on a warming pad, you know, where you would keep a coffee or in some warm water. Just don't let the water get into the glue. Make sure your bottle's very dry before you open it. Okay, just going to double check here, make sure I'm all covered. Okay, I am going to hit this with my torch because I have bubbles and I don't like them. Just don't let it hover. Okay, and then cure that for one cycle. And don't let your light touch your glue. So move your glue out of the way. That's important. <laughs> okay, this is going to be so pretty, you guys. Such a pretty foil. Okay, so I am so sorry, but my camera went a little wonky there. I put some glue on where the top, swim top or brassiere, whatever you would like to call it, is. I'm just going to add this foil. This is a transparent foil. I call it crushed glass, small crushed glass. And I'm adding that there. That looks pretty pretty. Good. All right. So for the fish, I went and got my favorite foil. Well, you know, these are my favorite foils, but these are my favorite patterned foils. Okay. So I have a little bit left of the snakeskin. I think I'm going to use both colors just on the fish, maybe, or should I do? Okay, let's do green, and it has some colors in it, so we'll, you know, move around and use different colors. And a little bit of this one. It's 
time to order some more. Okay, big fish. I'll do the big one first. So we're just gonna glue the whole fish. Do your best to stay in the black. And I'm going to use my little flashlight torch on this one. Wow, lots of bubbles. <laughs> At least fish have texture, right? See the bubbles? I don't like that. Okay, one, I'm going to do it this direction. With my, and if you cure something and you put your foil on and it says you can see through the foil and it feels sticky to you, hit your hit it with the light on top of the foil because it will still cure through that plastic if it's a transparent something you can see through and remove very pretty Mr. Fish Okay, I'm going to do the other two. I usually just do the fish tails, but I think this is just too pretty. See if it makes a difference. Not really. Still bubbles coming up. I don't know what's going on. My glue must be cold. But it's not interfering with the transfer, so I am okay with that. But I do, I digress. If this was a full metallic transfer, it wouldn't work. So you have to make sure that you're that you don't have bubbles and if you see bubbles don't put your foil on it add another layer of glue and then put your foil down and if that doesn't work you can always go to a base coat a UV base coat put that down and then add your light and then apply the glue and then the foil Yes, please look at that. That's gorgeous. Maybe we can do this one. Hmm. I think I want another. I'm thinking blue and pink. And this, the other one's orange and like a sunset. Do this one this color. Oh wait. Like that. Okay. Glue on our fish.
Yay. We're almost done, guys. This is so much fun. So I think we should put a flower or something in her hair. And I'm thinking one of the flowers from this set. I'll show you in just a moment. And we gotta add some bubbles, underwater bubbles. For sure. Okay. And I wanna do this this way. Pretty fish. So I'm thinking about around her ear area. Yeah. And which one should we put? This one. Or the blue one. Ah, oh, the blue one, huh? No. <laughs> I don't know. Oh my goodness. That one. Can you see it? Okay. Well, I'm going to cut around it so I don't mess this up. Now, I saw somebody do a reverse foil the other day. When I say somebody, it was a nail technician. And what they did is they put the glue on the back of the foil so that they would not mess up uh, and put on part of the design that they didn't want. So I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to try it. All right, guys, here we go. Experiment time together. So I'm just going to add the glue to the back of this flower, not to the polka dot, so the other part. She called it reverse foiling. And it's for when you're working with a foil that has more than one design on it and you just want to catch a little piece of it. This is very delicate work here. This foil is just barely balancing. Okay, do not torch it, you will burn yourself. When I say torch it, don't fire torch it. Yes, light torch it <laughs> so that it's cured. Ah, don't wrinkle. Okay, now I'm going to grab my tweezers, which I should have been using all along. And I'm going to put it right here in her hair. Okay, fingers crossed. Let's see. Do you think we did it? Do you think it worked? Oh, maybe not. No, reverse foil did not work today. That's too bad. Oh, there it goes. Yes, it does. Ha! You just have to grab it the right way. Nice. Can you believe it? Okay, so now I'm going to do some painting. And I think I'm going to use... Which color, guys? Should we use a gold, purple? This one. So much like that. Maybe okay. I decided to go with Orchid Flash, and I'm going to use this for accents around our mermaid. I'm going to 
gonna do some striping on the tail here. I'm gonna pour some of this in my dish. And I think I'm gonna change my brush. Thinner way. Okay, striping on the tail. This rock is bumpy, so it skips a lot. So just keep it as close as you can and try to connect it at the, where the, what would that be, the ripples would be in the tail. Same thing down this side. Finish the striping there. Okay, and then on the hair, I'm gonna do a similar thing and I'm going to basically Try this from like the hairline here so if she had like that and then we're just gonna do like the similar thing just put some highlights in her hair just like Medusa <laughs> hopefully this will work out I don't know very thin ones Too bad. And just keep going like the hairs behind the flower. You want to do better up here. Sorry, I'm so quiet, I'm concentrating. <laughs> but I want you guys to see too.
and then I'll just bring it off there like it's coming from under here Mermaid hair. What do you think? Well, I hope you're liking it. It might be too busy for some, maybe not busy enough for others. You never know. I think she's very beautiful. Very beautiful. Okay, now bubbles. Those are fun and easy. So you can either draw bubbles or you can just add bubbles uh, with uh, dotting tools. These are dotting rods so we can get many different size bubbles. So we're going to use the glue and add a dot. A dollop and hit it with your light now you can use pretty much whatever and wrinkled put <laughs> whatever transparent foil you want to use for um, your bubbles to make them look like bubbles underwater since it wrinkled I'm going to use this oil slick looking one and then I'm going to change glue because maybe I have a bad bottle of glue this is not good. Okay, so see this is like an oil slick. All right, hit that there. And we have a bubble underwater. And then when you put your resin on, that'll show through. And then what I like to do is do a few of those and then add little bubbles like from her face up her breathing bubbles and then add littler ones even with the dotting tool Just kind of zigzag them up and then fish have bubbles and little bubbles around the big bubbles and we'll add more big bubbles too but we'll get these going Okay, once you've cured your bubbles, grab your foil and cover the bubbles. I just use old pieces uh, that I've used before for bubbles because they usually have enough foil left on them to catch. Okay, got the bubbles covered. Pretty neat. Yeah, oh, I've missed these down here. I don't know if I cured those even. I better catch that. Okay. Okay, bubbles. Um, what's next? I think we're done, actually. We can do more bubbles. 
more bigger ones around. Okay, when you are all done with all your bubbles, you're done. Now you can go crazy, crazy with this and add jewelry like, you know, earrings or a little bracelet. You can add some rhinestones or little tiny, tiny, they call them caviar beads for a um, bracelet. Oh, I'm having a total idea. <laughs> we could give her a necklace and a bracelet with the caviar beads and there's shells and all kinds of little um, sequins for nails that you can put on there. Okay, I had to go get them because, you know, I started talking about it and I know that you're curious. So, caviar beads. If you don't know what they are, see these little tiny baby, baby beads. Little bitty guys. They're so small, they like stick to the top of the... You see that? Anyways, you could do like a little bracelet with those. You just put a dot of um, top coat, UV top coat on there. And then you just apply them in there and move them how you want them and hit it with that light real quick. And then there's also what I'm going to do today. I have starfish, little gold starfishes here. I'm going to add one of those here. And I have a seashell. I forgot about the seashells. It might be big enough. It might not be big enough. This is going to be too small, I think. But we'll see where we can put it. I was thinking for, you know, a seashell, a seashell bra. Uh, maybe we can do like a seashell belt. That should be cute. Oh, isn't even focusing. There. Can do two or three of these. Like that. Isn't it cute? Yeah. All right, we'll be done. That is that, guys. If you want to attach those things, just lift it up. Add one bitty baby tiny dot of top coat where you want it. Pop it back down in there. Hit it. Don't cover rhinestones with it because it'll you'll lose the facet. And then you want to set it in there with your light. This is a 12 LED UV light. It has 12 little lights in there. 12 LED lights that are UV and that is there now part of the rock and I want these yeah they're pretty cute huh go. Now we have a little seashell belt. Starfish earring. And then this will all be resined with UV resin, which I do not have time right now to do that. So I'm going to leave it here, but I will show you a finished picture. Thank you so much for tuning in today. If you enjoyed what you saw here and you'd like to see more of our uploads and tutorials and content, hit subscribe and the bell and it'll notify you when we uh, upload new stuff. And um, hit like if you enjoyed it. That way we can keep bringing you new things. And we know. And if you didn't like it, talk to us. 
give us a comment and tell us what uh, we can change and what you'd like to see. Anyways, thank you so very much, and I'll be seeing you again real soon.